But if you join Mavericks, fuck yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> 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 a little bit wild. too many. <laughs> man said I drink fast. You know what I mean? Oh! 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 Good ladies and gentlemen, Soul Mavericks crew here for a little chat. I'll introduce the crew first. Tom Malone, Infante, B-Boy Manny, Spin, Reckless Lee, and I'm AJ47. Uh, we are in Antwerp, Belgium. We've been here for Unbreakable, and we thought we could have a little discussion based on one of Spin's posts uh, about crew topics. So Spin, why don't you tell us about your post, and then let's kick this off. I recently done a post on my Instagram, on my story, asking people, more specifically to the younger generation, but to everyone in general, I guess, as what they thought was important or what was an incentive to be in a crew in 2019. Crews have been like a long standing thing in our culture since like, forever, but now it seems like it's less important or it's less recognised. So I thought I'd ask today's generations or today's scene what they thought was important about being in a crew and why they think it's important to be in a crew, if at all. I thought we could go deeper as a crew, seeing as we are a long-standing crew, 15 years deep now, and we can shed a little light between some of the older, middle and new generation in the crew to talk about what it is to be in a crew and what we think about some of the points that have been raised. Yeah, to give some context, we're, we're five generations deep. So I'm from one of the first generations. I believe Lee's from the second generation. Manny and Spin would be the third, and uh, Infante and Tom would be, <laughs> no, they'd be the fifth because we're missing Eddie and Terra. Eddie and Terra yeah, would be yeah, the fourth, yeah. so they'd be the fifth. I think one thing important to define is what defines a generation in a crew. The generation isn't defined by age. It's defined by how long that crew has been going and when you join within that timeline of the crew. So me and Spin would be second, third generation because we weren't part of the original Mavericks when it started. I think the pizza said. Right, <laughs> Tom's going to go get the pizza. We're going to carry on. Go on. Talking about generations and all that. Not everyone started in Mavericks. So a lot of people have their, especially the first generation, the founding members, they all have their original crews. So for us, it'd be La Familia. La Familia is our familiar crew. original crew. For AJ, would be having fun. For Lee, would be H2O. And Gabriel was Kali Squad. You were still active. So I think we could all maybe shed a little bit of light of as to why or how we ended up in Mavericks having come from another crew and what the difference between those two crews are or were yeah, yeah. and why we are here and still not there sort of thing right. you know? because there are different types of crews not all crews are the same and they, all, they don't all serve the same purpose Tom, you can put the pizzas down <laughs> Just whack it in the middle bro, the man's hungry <laughs> <laughs> Alright this one's just cheese up. Vanessa's here everybody You want a pizza? Welcome to this lesson We have friends with us so if they the Enter the camera, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. I just want to win. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. Alright, so. <laughs> Why would you do that? Anyway. That familiar. Manny was in the crew before I was in the crew. So I think you should start. Was I? Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Back to it. Let's go back to like Spin's original post. One of the comments that I made was based on joining crews. For the first time you join a crew, it's usually your boys. It's who you came up It's the people that you found breaking with. A lot of people say it's their school friends. You just had a crew that you wanted to train with get better with and then start doing some battles. We'd go to other jams around UK, you know, we'd go to clubs. I don't even know if crews do this anymore. Not dancer nights, not b-boy events. We would go out to a hip-hop club and we would just dance. We used to go to our boy's house, train in his garden. We just put lino out. The whole battle scene wasn't as big. So we were battling every weekend, but it wasn't so big that this was why we were together. We were together because we were boys. La Familia started slowly stopping for life reasons. The fact that, yo, I wanted to keep battling, Spin wanted to keep battling. We've done the La Familia thing for a long while as a two on two. You would have seen the Circle King. La Familia! loads of jams and then it got to the point where it was like we want to do more we need a crew to do these bigger battles we tried some hybrids like break station in the end it was like yo if we want to now move on to the part of actually growing and becoming more known and doing bigger jams you needed a crew you want to do battle of the year you need an eight-man crew you want to do uk champs you need an eight-man crew the interesting part though for this transition shit was that you were in that familiar first but i was in Mavericks first Yep. I joined La Familia as a kid and then I joined Mavericks for all the reasons you just said and then you joined what like a year later? Probably. 
Like about a year, year, just under a year later. Yeah. So I'd been fighting the, the Mavericks thing for a, a while. I was like, screw Mavericks. I wanted to beat them. We wanted to beat them. That's yeah. all. That's all. That was all there was to aim yeah. for for us in, in London. It was like, cool. It was always us in the finals, but Mavericks were more competitive than La Familia. And group battles, we would always, always lose, you know, because there was a certain level of commitment, a certain level of accountability that we didn't have in La Familia, an organization that we didn't have in La Familia that Mavericks already had. Now, my personal circumstances was I was, I was, I was going to be a dad, and that kind of led me to uh, think about how much time I had to do the things I wanted to achieve. Hence, like, the UK champs, the Battle of the Year, R16 yeah. at the time, and all these other yeah. events. And that led me to join Mavericks. Like, I was on him for over a year, and so was our other crew member, Abdul. It took a long time for this guy to even consider. But then that, you know, yeah, that shows the level of respect for his, his previous crew, uh, down to loyalty. I was, I was committed. When I finally did join, the growth from the minute of joining to like one year later was, um, you know, you, you can't explain it. Like it was different because I had, even though I'd been trained, I'd been training in the same places. Yeah. We were still going to the same events. But once I was in, the relationship we had at these events, at these training sessions changed. Yeah. Right? Something I said to you guys, but actually to you specifically. Training around this is one thing, but being in the crew is something else. The level of account the level of accountability is different, the expectation is different, and therefore the, the training is different. You know what I mean? And I felt that immediately. First jam we did was Fluido, two thousand eleven. And that's when I felt what it was like to be in a highly competitive crew. And that familiar we had an approach. Our whole thing was the approach. Yeah. We like footwork. Like our crew was if anything was more like almost an elements crew. I did graffiti. My man does spoken word, this is, I mean, this is the closest thing we had to an MC. <laughs> you got, you know, the Debo's a DJ, everyone did something, you know, Ibs and, and Ken, the, the rockers, like, even in a few members we had, we covered a lot of elements. But now, joining Mavericks, it was like, boom, this, this crew is the champs, the big stage, the competitive, the, the down to business, like, let's do that. Business sort of competition. I mean, it's funny because I made the jump because I remember I was on the phone, I think it was the carnage from our crew. And I was explaining why Spin joined Mavericks. And halfway through the conversation, I actually was like, I've just talked myself into joining it. Because everything, <laughs> everything I said, seriously. Because I, you know me, I was more stubborn than Spin. I was like, fuck that, no, I'm not going, fuck that, no, 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 we've got to smash these guys. And halfway through, everything I'd said the reason he had done, I was like, that's what I want to do. There's nothing wrong with like your crew not wanting to do these big jams. Life takes over. People realise at a certain stage, I don't want to be travelling 24-7, being broke, sleeping on floors. I want to have a job, a family, I've, got, I've been studying, I've finished now, I want to go into this field. The first thing I saw, I went down to this youth club um, and I watched a little performance and it was this crew called H2O Crew and they were doing a showcase. I saw some head spins. I, like, ah, I want to learn that. Uh, so I went you down to you no, 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 I didn't, I didn't get very far from learning, I just went into learning. I started learning, I got down with the guys there, and after a couple of years of practice, I um, entered a few jams, and I ended up getting down with h 2 crew, uh, so it was kind of an honour for me to then go with, they were the best crew in Wales at the time, and to actually get down with them and battle with them. At Welsh Champs, I then ended up battling in the solos against Abdul from Soul Mavericks. What year was this roughly? Just 2007. Content. And then Abdul said to me, then, you're gonna join Break Station. What's, what's Break Station? He said, this is a super crew um, with members from La Familia and Soul Mavericks. And he said to me, I don't have to leave my current crew, which was H2O. It's just if I wanted to come down and train in London, learn some stuff and do some more battles, then I was more than welcome. For a little while with Break Station, still doing stuff with H2O. Due to like some inter-crew politics, politics with h 2 everyone went their own way. I was then sort of left crewless. Abdul, that was in 2009, and then Abdul just walked up to him and went, yo bro, you're doing Battle of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> in true Abdul <laughs> <laughs> With who? I, I assume with Break Station. No, 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 Soul Mavericks. And uh, that's kind of how I joined Soul Mavericks. Yours is funny. Mine. His original crew was called Having Fun. When I was a teenager, I was coming up to like 17, 18, um, I was walking through Trocadero, this is before London Trocadero was a training space for, for, for dancers in general. It was just an arcade, it was a giant arcade in the UK. And I saw these guys on these dance machines, right? And then my man did a little L kick on the thing. I was like, oh, wow, okay. Who, who was that? Quan. Right, it was Quan. Right. Right. <laughs> a little L kick on the machine. I started doing a baby swipe and they're like, ta -da, ta -da. I was like, Whoa! <laughs> and then I went over to him, teach me that. <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> I, I don't really know you, innit? He was like, oh, look, if you're really serious, you come back next Saturday at one o'clock. 
came back next week and then I started making friends with the people. What I do rate about these guys is they would they would pay for a session, like a studio in Pineapple. Brought bear cuts to the session. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, I trained hard. <laughs> And the crew was originally formed from a, a French version of the crew, having fun, which is, yeah. And they just continued the name. I met them in 2003, right? And then following the next year, we planned a trip to France in 2004. Met up with the other branch of having fun crew. And then from this trip in France, we went to IBE 2004. And that's when f shit changed for me. And in that space of that year, my crew were having discrepancies and a bit of arguments. And then so basically we started falling apart. And then this old guy started coming to training. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this old guy, right? Doing some windmills, which were dope. Doing some head spins, which were even better. And I was like, right, this old guy got some skills. And he was just hanging around. He didn't really say nothing for ages. And then one day he must have said to me, he's like, oh, I'm putting together a crew. I was like, oh yeah. Not really listening. And then he sort of referenced that um, B-Boy Mouse would be involved in the crew. And now I'm listening because Mouse was like, he was killing it at the time. He was one of the B-Boys that I'd noticed in the UK. And I was like, you know what, this, this guy's someone to look up to. Do you know what I mean? And he also mentioned a couple of other B-Boys that I, I respected at the time as well. He's like, okay, come down. And I was like, okay, under one condition, you have to bring Eugene and Abdul with me. And obviously Abdul and Eugene and myself joined the crew in 2005 following on from that IBE experience in 2004 to what is now Soul Mavericks. And that is my journey into the crew. Now it gets interesting. The <laughs> 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 Gully Squad was a kids crew that, that me and my, one of my friends started um, from school. Gully Squad started in 2014. Around five of us all together at the beginning. I'm training at one of the training spots and I see one, one uh, Asian guy. So I'm here practicing my flares and windmills. And this guy with the ice cream, Chinese guy with the ice cream, comes up to me and gives me some tips. I started to see some progress in my moves. And from there, uh, I started to train with um, him first, and then he introduced me to the rest of the crew. As well, I was uh, pursuing my uh, goal of getting good on my own accord. I've been having talks with um, the people like Spin and Gabs about joining the crew. What we was doing was it was uh, the crew was very small. It was only actually three of us active towards the end. I think it became a time where I wanted to step it up. I wanted to seek help. I came to Spin and asked him, well, I told him that I thought I was ready to be a part of the crew. Prior to that decision, I guess, I'd get together with Gabs and we'd just chat with you guys and be like, okay, you guys are doing this much. Uh, what is it you want to achieve? What do you hope to achieve? And, and they said they wanted to be a competitive crew. It'd be like, cool, that means this, this, and this. <laughs> Unless you're willing to do this, this, and this on your own, um, you know, there's also the option of obviously joining us and continuing that journey. But regardless, five, six, seven, what are you doing? Start again. There's a process that needed to be had. We, you could either do that process with our guidance or do that process within the crew, and that carried on for a while between. I don't, know, I don't know how long it took between you know people finding out what they were doing and what they wanted to do and eventually yeah after after i finished my a levels i i knew for myself that i wanted to take that guidance to um to a further level by joining the crew and um, you were the only one that you were the first one to join yeah i was the first one to join out of my crew i went to a class at a place called sunshine studios the class was cancelled and the only other class at the same time was a breaking class with a guy called chuck Chuck, for whatever reason, was like, oh, you have potential, started training me a little bit. His two-on-two -two partner was a guy called Gavin. So he says to me, I'm going to introduce you to Gavin because Gavin can help you go to, like, the next level. I'm getting trained by Gavin. At the same time, I'm doing all these street dance competitions. I meet Lee. Lee starts teaching me stuff as well. Went to the local spots where Mavericks were training and stuff. And at this point, I think Mavericks are, like, superheroes. I made sure that I was training either next to Mavericks or as close as I could get at every session. Gavin convinced Gabriel, actually, for UK champs one year when Gully Squad are entering to put me in a lineup for Gully Squad, which is how me and Gabriel actually ended up being good friends. So then we did that, we qualified, we did well, we went back to, to training and stuff. And then one day, a couple months down the line, Mavericks had a meeting and yeah, I got a call afterwards and I joined the crew. So that's a little recap on how we got here. How each of us got here in this crew, we're now all repping some Mavericks, have been for a while. That takes us on to the next point as to the difference between crews. So there's different types of crews. The point of the post was to highlight the importance of crew, crew culture, ship, culture, crew, culture crew activity in general in the scene as a, as a whole, right? And why that activity is so important. The reason I think it's so important is because I think, like, and I'm, I think we could all agree that crew stuff, crew 
the crewism is like the foundation of what our culture is built on, whether it's dancing, rapping, the, the, the crews we listen to, Wu Tang, whatever, like yeah, all yeah, of these yeah. people, it, they're all crews, right? There's different types of crews. I think we've kind of highlighted that because we've come from a particular type of crew to a new type of crew, yeah. right? So I think if we talk a little bit on the different types of crews and the pros and cons to those type of crews, it can like extend a little bit more on what the post was originally about. The majority, 90% of the people said, uh, people to train with, like-minded individuals, um, family. feedback, family, all this stuff, which is the general stuff that everyone wants to be in a crew in a crew for, and that, that makes sense. But today, I think we need to be a bit more clear on what that means regarding Direction what you want to do. Depending on what you want to do, there's certain crews that won't match what you what you want to do and whatnot, right? Mavericks, as much as we are a family, we're here, we're busting drinks, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a different country. There's, there's, a, there's a family element to it, but what brought us together primarily is the competitive element. Element, so right? it's always business first. Exactly. So we're competitive. We're a competitive crew, but because we're all, hopefully, usually on the same wave, if we're all striving for that goal together, that's what brings the element of family towards us because we're going to be spending so much time in training or competing or traveling and pushing each other to achieve that goal mm. that it brings us together as a family now most of the people that are that responded to my post never once mentioned joining a crew to achieve a particular goal joining this crew to do champs that we did yeah. joining a crew to do battle of the year joining the crew to do r16 that's what we joined for that's what I guess in yeah. some way, shape or form. Every, every one of us joined for that yeah. at some level. Basically. But that question in 2019 didn't bring up that answer. No, right? In didn't. 2019, the answer that got brought up was family, like-minded individuals, this, Vibes, that, the other, the, the, gen, the general stuff, yeah. which is, I guess, is more towards the culture side of things more than the competitive side of things. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> so I think if we talk about the difference between the crews that we were originated in, and the crew that we joined, the pros and cons to that might give a little bit more yeah, context. And people can look out for, okay, what it is, what what are your goals and is your crew in line with those goals? We've kind of broken it down to like three or so different types of crews. There's hip hop crews, general hip hop crews that are just that down more to the, the elements. As in you're a hip hop crew in terms of you've got DJs, rappers, graffiti writers, b-boys, MCs, beatboxers, whatever it is. Right. You've got a competition battle crew, which is straight up and down, soul mavericks. So I is a competition crew. We were built for that, for, for that, that. Re for that one reason. Right? Right. To represent at something like UK champs and represent UK at the highest level competitively. Yeah. Right. Hold the fort for the UK scene. And then there's the other side, which is also kind of falls in line with La Familia. There's the elements crew, but there's also the hobby, family, lifestyle kind of crew where you do breaking. You all share this hobby. You all share this. This, this way of life, but it's not necessarily, necessarily about the stages, winning stuff, or whatever. So I guess maybe we can talk about the pros and cons. Firstly, I'd say any cons that come up later would be based around if you want to progress beyond that crew. Everyone talks about, you know, no matter what, and this is a generation thing, every generation says it. They say, ah, oh, this generation doesn't know this, this and that. Sorry, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that doesn't mean you can start fucking shouting because you're in the Close back, the door, motherfuckers. Please. It means you can Close. talk. <laughs> Lock the door. <laughs> yeah, it, it's more of a personal thing because obviously if you're watching at home and you're in one of these type of crews that we talk about, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, we're a competition crew focused like team and we're going to discuss what we perceive yeah. as the pros and cons. But obviously, you guys at home can perceive the pros and cons in your own way and maybe see and, and just see if this resonates with you or not. Do you know what I mean? Because people can understand different yeah. perspectives as well. Well, what's your perspective? If you're in a crew, firstly, yeah, let's get it down. That is hip hop. That's the culture. And breaking came from hip hop. In reality, your crews, even in battle crews, you're going to have these elements because people are going to find different parts of the culture. So when we say elements, though, we mean a crew that is about hip hop. The the pros, history. You're going to get history in everything. Everything. Because everyone in the crew is about hip hop. You're going to get taught all the elements because everyone in your crew knows the elements. So you're going to find out about you're gonna f how to graph, how to MC, how how to DJ and then we're all breakers anyway. So you are probably gonna be in the culture for your life because if you don't like the elements of hip hop and you just wanna battle, battling can have a life expectancy and then you finish and move on. But when you're into the elements, you might stop battling but then you might become a DJ. You might get into graph, you might get into MC. So you have a wide variety of things which you can learn 
you have a wide variety of things to get into if you decide that like i like breaking but i'd rather do this this and that and you have a passionate crew that know all those things so they will teach you everything and at the end of the day you will be hip-hop you know a lot of breakers aren't hip-hop heads they like breaking but when it comes to the hip-hop culture they might not be so into the at those elements but these are the pros you have hip-hop as a baseline the cons and it's not even a con but all crews have people that do everything but we're going to the extreme and saying a crew that is into the culture hip-hop and they don't see competition as this big thing that they need to do and there's the place where you might go one day well i'm loving this and i've learned my hip-hop i've learned my history but i want to do battle of the year and none of that unfortunately will get you to battle of the year and you can have all that history you can you know how to do all this but to make a show and anyone who's done battle of the year will tell you that all gets put aside everything, everything. your schedule your job your girlfriend, everything gets put aside Social to make life. this show. Period. Exactly. So you're like, you might go to this Elements crew and go, we want to do Battle of the Year. And they might turn around and say to you, we're not about that. That's the show. And then you're like, but then who do I do that with? And that's when you might say, okay, well, this crew has been asking me to get down with them. A very important thing here that you might hear from all of us is we didn't leave our old crews. They might have disbanded. They might go into other things, but no one here said, I left my old crew. I just said, go, go away. I'm joining Mavericks. No, we moved into another crew to achieve other goals. But a con will be an awkward moment where you might have to talk to them and say... And you have that tough conversation. Exactly. Say, These are my goals. I don't believe our goals align yeah. anymore at this current period in time. And I'm not leaving, but I want to get down with this crew. And at that moment, a big con might be, certain crews might say... They might give you the ultimatum and say it's them or us. So the Elements crew is, is, is a bit more broad in terms of like it's hip hop in general. But then you have hobby lifestyle people that will be maybe specifically to one genre. So yeah. it be MC and graffiti breaking. In our context it will be breaking. So it's people that enjoy breaking, enjoy training, enjoy traveling and meeting other people and being in these other countries and ciphering. But they're not competitive. Yeah. You won't see them at Battle of the Year. You won't see them at UK and Champs. You won't even see them compete. They might just be there just for the ciphers, right? Even just enjoying what it is to train with other people from other countries. They might just travel just to train with other people yeah, yeah, yeah. from other countries and other cities, even other cities yeah. in their own country, yeah. right? And I guess that's like a that's like a section or like a like a sub thing of the whole elements thing. But I think they go kind of together. Yeah. You can put both of them on one side, I yeah. think, and then the other side is winning competition the battles the the, the big stages yeah, the yeah, lights yeah. camera action a good point made is um that kind of aj dropped in is not everyone who started in soul mavericks is still in soul mavericks the one thing people have to remember is like you can try it maybe you're sitting there going i don't know but this crew's asking i'd say as long as your your crew understands give it a try and you might turn around and go this ain't for me but if you're wondering the only way to find out is to try because at the end of the day until you do it, you don't know. You might say you even want it and you think you want it. And then you do it and you go, I ain't seen my girlfriend, I can't get to do this. I'm always traveling, blah, blah, blah. It sounds exciting, but some people are like, I just want to be home right now. The purpose of us is holding the UK flag as high as possible at the highest competitive level that we can, right? For La Familia, it was a different thing. Yes. Right? Our ethos was different. Our ethos, which I mentioned before, was an approach. So yeah. our approach is like, it's not just representing. We had to represent a certain way. We want to be at these jams, whatever, representing this to the highest level. That's when you kind of have to uh, realize the crew you're in and what they give weight to. Yeah. And that takes me on to the next thing, which is accountability. It's a big thing that most people in life generally shy away from because accountability fucking sucks really you're being held accountable by mm. other people if not by yourself by your, by your actions but in La Familia they, if, if we compared like what we were held accountable to we were held accountable to holding that approach yeah. just to clarify so people were like because I know people go what's this approach what's it you know to make it a bottom line baseline thing we were a cypher crew which means if you didn't top walk if you didn't do footwork if you didn't dance on beat if you didn't hit basic freezes and go downs that was not the La Familia way. We could not have a member in our crew who didn't have the basic foundational element. So when you're when we're talking about an approach, again, you have to look at your crew. What's your crew's approach? If you can't rock a cypher, you, you're you not doing the La Familia way. This is La Familia. We didn't get known for winning competitions. We got known in cyphers. We got known in UK for cyphers. And we were proud of that. And that's why we joined. We've done the cypher thing. Now we want to win. Uh, a competitive crew is, is, like you said, it's so hard for some people mm -hmm. to, to try it and test it. And I think like if you come in and you try it and you and you don't achieve it, it feels like a failure. Yeah. And then you, you know you don't want to go through that. So man, you know might not try it in the first place. But at the end of the day, if you're willing to try it 
and you're going to join a competitive crew, the one thing that is almost absolute, in my opinion, in a competitive crew, is the accountability yeah. that you're going to be held to. Yeah. Oh, good thing for this accountability. Cool. Me joining Mavericks, in La Familia we didn't do routines that much, and I suck at routines anyway. So, in Mavericks, when I joined, they were heavy on routines. And I was, I was, I'll be honest, I was like, not anti-routine, I was anti-long routines. I was anti-this routine. And, you know, even to this day, I still cause trouble in training sessions. But, I knew that I had to still go and do the routine. Even bitching and complaining about it and causing trouble, I still stayed in the room. I didn't go, oh, I'm not doing this, I'm leaving. Because I knew I signed up to this. So I might have had my moan, I might have had my bitch and pissed people off. But in the end, when they say you're coming through at this point or you're doing this, I had to do it. I had to say to them like, okay, show me that step, I'm messing it up. And then people would take me on the side and go, come here, Manny, I will teach you. And I had to mess up a million times and mess up on stages. But I didn't at any point, even though I was up there, like really, not hating it, but up there being like, man, you know, like, can't I just go, just do this decipher way? I was like, no, but I signed up for this. And the generals were there at the time. It was Gabs and Gavin. And I listened to the generals. Let me have him in the crew. Let, yeah, I let him have his bitch on his moan. But then in the end, when they say, Manny, stand up, time for the routine, I'd stand up and do the routine. We have brought La Familia things into some members. Yeah, yeah that's right? true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we first had to get down with the Mavericks way, yeah. right? Because that's what we joined. We yeah. joined Mavericks, right? And it's like, cool, we've learned to do the Mavericks thing. Now, how about if we insert some of this and this and this? If once first yeah. doing the thing that we can be held accountable for. 100%. But this is also the point of acquisition of new members because each new member can bring a level of understanding to the dance because it's a fucking vast variety of, of understanding to the crew and can benefit in many ways, not just in, in, the, in the ways of skill. Yeah, and you know what, the routines that, that, that you were saying, I didn't like them either. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't particularly like them either. I learned all of them and then I was like, what about if we change this? We just do this bit. Instead of doing that, we could just do this step. But because I've learned it yeah. and, uh, and executed it, now I'm in a position to at least suggest, in, in comparison to the other two kind of crews that we, that we mentioned earlier, in a competitive crew, the accountability is way more direct and almost more immediate yeah, yeah. because it's it's easier to identify the direct goal that you're supposed to be aiming towards yeah because yeah. you have a goal it's yeah. this jam to win that jam you need to win right and if at that jam certain things don't happen we'll say this this and this we're not in tune with what we needed to do to achieve that jam which means you need to do this you need to do this i need to do this we need to do xyz yeah right and that means the accountability thing is a lot more active, yeah. more often, and sometimes yeah. harsher. Yeah, thick skin's important as well. Because yeah, yeah, like yeah, being yeah. in such a like a competition driven crew, after every jam or every time, even if you guys aren't there, if I'm at a jam and you see the footage, it's always like, yo, this is what you need to be doing. You've got to have a thick skin to be like, oh, this is what I need to do and I need to fix up it. And I can't be salty about it. That's what I've got to do to get better, to achieve what I'm here to and achieve. You, you, have to I, that, you have to take that criticism. Yeah. This can cause conflict because we can be drinking on a Friday and then the jam's on a Saturday or Sunday and someone fucks up <laughs> because they weren't at training. And that shit has the conflict of like, oh, we're yeah. boys, we're family, we're this team. Oh, but wait, we're this serious battle crew because it is business first. That accountability is more highlighted to happen in the competitive crew yeah. than it is in the other two teams. In the other two, it, it kind of is glossed over because it doesn't matter. It's not, the, you know, like the well, one thing. But because the weight of the representation of yeah. the crew. Yeah. Is, is held somewhere else. Exactly. One thing that we all have in common, regardless of what crew that you are, is representation. Regardless of what the ide ideology is, it's representing yeah. that yeah. ideology. What that do you represent? Practice. Have you we represented represent. it? Ultimately, even though we're talking from a competitive crew side of things, what we want to bring across is the fact that crew is important regardless. In today's times of 2019, what, what hip -hop, where hip-hop is, where breaking is, where all this thing is, I mean, it's really important to to promote crews. Yeah, and if you, if, with all of the, the amazing things that are happening, such as like Red Bull BC1, such as the Olympics and things like that, you know, different perspectives for everyone, but you want to maintain that crew thing so you keep the culture alive, because nobody, regardless of the general, regardless of the sponsor or, or whatever kind of billionaires putting money into whatever, nobody can take the culture away from you, mm. yeah? And they can't take it away from your crew if you hold on to that element, Boss. right? 
this might switch the flow of things a little bit. But no, go ahead. Go ahead. Basically, uh, something you said in your Instagram post about high level people, everyone's favorite B boys, and they all belong to crews. You look at, you know, like the wig, ginger, this is a good gun, right? After this, now yeah. we go back to the whole thing about being harsh within the crews and saying, like, holding yourself accountable. You said, you, you know, this is the goal. You didn't reach it. You need to fix it. You then go and fix it. You improve yourself. There's a big part of being in a crew helps push you to another level. So that's why, like, I agree with what you said in the in the in the Instagram post about how it's important to be in a crew and help push each other. It is harsh. It's a harsh environment. It's a harsh world. If that's your goal and that's what you're aiming for, being in a crew will help push you there because you have to hold yourself accountable for what you're saying yeah. you're going to do. Firstly, there's a saying, iron sharpens iron. Look it up if you don't know it. I always go back to history and people, and like I said, at the beginning, everyone was like, so Mavericks ain't a real crew. This was at the beginning. Nowadays, there's no question. Everyone knows so Mavericks is a crew, it's a crew. We get people who ain't in our crew who might bat with us from the UK and people think they're in the crew now. Why is that? You gotta remember the B-boy, B-girl breaking scene is international. But 15 years ago, there was only like five big international jams. So your crew was mostly repping at home. If you're repping at home in your country, you can stay within your like original crew. Why? Because it's at home. Because the biggest problem that people found and the biggest thing me and Spin found with La Familia, it wasn't that La Familia wasn't battling. It was getting on planes to go to other countries once, two times a month to travel. We're in Belgium this week, you know, Spin says he's, go he's going to France, you know what I mean? He's, he might be going to France. Yeah, Switzerland last week, IBE the week before, Outbreak before. These are all different countries. Do you want to get on a plane and keep going to all these countries because this is where the scene is? And then you usually find that you're in a country with someone from another crew hanging with them because your crew didn't come. So the progression of the crews, who is the international crew that are repping on the international level? And if your crew's not there, you might see this international one that you see at training. They're from your town, they're from your city, they're from your country, but <laughs> your crew didn't go. And then you're stuck there maybe doing a solo and you want to do the crew battle, or even the, just the free on free, but you got nobody. You remember all your response to my to my post? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that you said, uh, you said a lot, but like yeah. in one of the in one of the things that you said that I, I specifically remember is the the natural progression of crews, and why again I go to the original post of why crews is important in the first place yeah. is because even if that's not where you end up, yeah, it's a it's a stepping stone mm -hmm. to finding out what you actually want. Yeah. And in that process, you find out who you actually need to be with. Yeah. So you might join a crew and that might be the people that you started and you learned yeah. breaking with and, and you found breaking is amazing and all this stuff. Halfway through, you realize you're on something a little bit different to these yeah. people, you know, or, or you want maybe more competitive or more cultural, whatever it is, to the people around you. You end up finding, because you're traveling to these yeah. places, you're going to these places, you find other people that are, you then realize we're on the same thing as you yeah. are, and now you join another crew, yeah. which is kind of what happened to us. Yeah. But it, luckily for us, yeah. it was local. Yeah. Nowadays, the international scene is so small that this might happen with a crew in another country, but you can see them every week if you're down to go to these jams that exactly. you said. Exactly, and be there. And this is, this is where things have changed recently, which is why I guess crew culture is, is a little bit messy now. Yes, because you can be in a country... Let's do some examples. Supreme is in Rugged, but he lives in Denmark. And if you don't know, you know, Rugged are a crew from Holland. They're from Holland. Kareem from Monsters and Rock Force is also in Vagabonds. I know he was, maybe he's not anymore. Again, you can correct me, but I know he was in Vagabonds at one point. And to show another example of what I'm saying Wilson. about home, Wilson, he's from Holland, he's in Soul Mavericks. Rock's right, we know from BC1 All Stars, but he's also in Squadron. One of the things that I, I like about this, even though it's not the ideal, yeah. it's still organic. Yes. <clears throat> and the fact that it's still organic, is still somewhat true to what I I think we're promoting here, yeah. and it's the 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 promotion of crews, regardless. Yes. Right. The fact that we need crews. So if you're at training and you're a bunch of beginners and you're in uni or whatever, boom, and you train together, make a fucking crew. make a crew, make a crew. In London, we have a lot of people from abroad, like especially Spain, for example. If you guys Spain, are watching Poland, this, Poland, Italy, make a crew. You train like together, you guys all the train time. together, you vibe together. I see make, you at training. Make a yeah, crew. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> make a crew. Come for people. Like regardless of what your ideology is, make a crew because crew culture 
is the essence and is the backbone of this dance. I think there's a distinction need to be made. When we say crew culture, we're saying make a crew that will that will last, that will that will put a name out there, and you will try your best to be together. When people come together for crews, they might go, oh, but we do crews all the time. But when you come together and a name is made up for the day, this crew can be probably the best crew we've ever seen high level. But what <clears> happens <throat> is, is it doesn't have the same attachment now. If I see a crew with superstar worldwide fiends comes together, you know, and it's just a crew and they say, oh, we're just going to call ourselves this because we're all friends, we came together. They might win the jam and annihilate everybody. But if I'm now on YouTube or I see that come up, I might not, I might not even, I'm not going to connect with that. Cause I'm like, who's Superstar All-Star Fiend? I'm like, I don't know. But I see Jinjo just battled BC1 All-Stars. I'm watching that battle. Why am I watching that battle? Because they have a history and a connection. And I want to see Jinjo versus BC1 All-Stars. For all I know, Superstar All-Star Fiends was five Jinjo and just one other guy. And they just decided to make another name. But because that crew hasn't made a connection and a history, I'm going to skip that for now. Monsters versus Squadron. That's why you watch us. Yeah, it is. That's why you watch us, because we're 15 years deep next year. Yeah. 15 years. That, that Fifteen don't come for free. Years and deep. you don't even know who you're going to watch. But you see some Mavericks, and you, you know it might still be expected to see members that you ain't seen there for time, but you'll watch it because you the you might Mavericks ask, have 15 years. Exactly. You might ask, where's this member? Where's this member? But you still click. <laughs> you friggin' have a call about skill methods tomorrow. Boom, and you, I'm watching. Then we're watching. I'm watching. This topic is going to mean different things in different places. Yeah. Asia, Africa, South America, Russia, whatever. It's going to mean different things. We're talking from a European, mostly yeah. a European uh, perspective. perspective on the whole crew thing, right? So, like, just to, just to put it into context what we're saying, this is not general for the whole breaking scene. This is for the European scene, which is mainly competitive. In closing of this video, what do we want to say to all the crews, all the b-boys and b-girls out there? What do we want to say? I think, I think the most important thing that we're trying to say after all this is one, there's a lot of importance that comes with crew culture in general. Whether you are a hobby, a lifestyle culture crew, a competitive crew or whatever it is, our culture relies on crew culture rap, MC, graffiti, whatever it is, everyone that we recognize as a successful person in each element comes from a crew because crew is important in hip hop, in breaking, in everything it is we do. So whether you're beginners or high level, crews is important. Start a crew, be part of a crew, maintain your crew, push your crew, crew's important. We are Soul Mavericks, we fucking love you guys. Good night. <laughs> right, yeah.